Hello, I'm here to speak about the armor of God and putting it on and why we need it and why we don't put it on. Ephesians 6.10 tells us, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole and full armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the Satan. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, and against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the, the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having on the readiness and as shoes for your feet having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace in all circumstances take up the shield of faith in which you can extinguish all of the flaming darts of the uh, the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication to that end keep alert with all perseverance making supplication for all the saints finally be strong in the lord in the strength of his might and pour on the whole armor of god i read back and then i went back to 610 at the start <clears throat> so the armor of God, as it said, we are fighting demons in heavenly places. The Bible said it. We put on the armor of God not to lower ourselves and fight with demons. We place the armor of God on ourselves that we may not be hit by the enemy's attack and then be lowered. We need to stop believing that to put on the armor of God, we're lowering ourselves as low as the demons know. The point is, without the armor of God, we're going to be attacked and fall. We will fall to where the demons are, and then they'll just dwell with us. Then we'll live with them. Think about how you fall into sin. One day you're really in the spirit. Once you fall, to not hurt, to not feel conviction, you start doing your old habits. You start doing your old sins. You become the demon once you fall. The armor of God is not of us. It's of God. That's why when we have it on, we are protecting our salvation. That's a good way to word it. We're protecting our salvation. But here's the thing. We we try and convince ourselves that we want to put it on, but we forget or that we we, we don't know the full armor of God. Well, listen, I, I, I read it on a piece of paper and I drew all of the pieces of it to help my faith and I put it on the wall. So now I can never forget the full armor of God. But let me prove to you that it's not forgetfulness, nor is it the fact that we're uneducated. It's because we do not want to put the armor of God on. That's where it is. It's not of us. It's of God. God's salvation, it, that comes in a different way. That's Jesus Christ on the cross. He died for us, and we have no choice but to feel that in our hearts. That's why it makes people cry in the spirit. You know, that's why people who come to Christ, they start crying over all of their sins because they've been forgiven. That is a gift. So is this. This is the same kind of gift, but we have to place it on ourselves. Unlike salvation is placed onto us, we have to place this onto ourselves. And the thing is, we don't want to. That's what it is. We don't want to most of the time, but we do. Of course we want to. The spirit wants to be protected. This is for the soul and the spirit. The flesh will suffer in the armor of God. But your spirit will suffer if you don't have it on. And your soul will burn. Like, seriously, we will fall to the same level as the day. As it says, use the shield of faith to protect yourself from the flaming arrows of the enemy. So imagine you don't have the shield of faith. When he shoots this arrow, this conviction, this satanic, demonic conviction, not conviction of God, what's going to happen? You're going to be shot to the chest and you're going to fall. You're not going to die because it's spiritual warfare. But you are going to fall to the same level as them. We can stand in heavenly places. We can stand in the heavenly places with God. And as he said, the kingdom of, earth, of heaven is in our hearts. Like, of course, it's a physical realm as well. The kingdom of heaven is God's dwelling place and the earth is his footstool. 
but right now we can still have it and bring it down to earth as Christ did we are the body of Christ we need to keep the armor of God on for the sake of our salvation I'm gonna read more verses Ephesians 6 11 put on the full armor of God so that you'll be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil we have been studied and we have monitoring spirits that know all of our sins and our ancestors sins they know what will make us drop they know what will make us fall to our knees the demons and they will send attacks they will nothing is a coincidence not one thing that has happened in your life is a coincidence not one every single text message you've got is either from God or Satan every single phone call you've got is either from God or Satan and they're fighting for their will to be done the Lord shall win every fight but our wills in the middle of that we need to remember that us our, our free will is in the middle of Satan and God fighting for our will God has lowered himself and humbled himself to have a fight with the evil one instead of just wiping everyone out he is the best most loving God hallelujah bro he loves us that much he knows that if he just removes Satan then we can't be in heaven because then we don't have free will so he needs to humble himself to fight Satan he is for us and he's given us armor and we're not even putting it on like seriously we need to tee up Ephesians six thirteen. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist the e in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Further confirming what I'm trying to say here, we're not trying our hardest. If you put the armor of God on every day, it says right here, that is the most you can do. The most you can do. We can follow Christ's teaching, you know, I'll name the armor of the God right, of the armor of God right now so that you know Christ's teaching is in the armor of God the gospels are in the armor of God it's the sword of the spirit the sword of the spirit is the word of God as Jesus said in the wilderness it is written it is written I I I suggest you guys read Psalm 118 even so I'll read it for you now but I always like to say it is written in the name of the Lord I cut them off because it says they encompass me on every side they encompass me like bees and they died out as quickly as burning thorns and in the name of the Lord I cut them off whenever I'm tempted whenever I, I'm filled with hate anger anything I, that's the one I go to Psalm 118 I'm gonna find it for us now I'm gonna read it to you guys and then we'll get back to the point but that is the sword of the spirit you know it's the it's the word of God and that's how you use it it is written it is written Jesus Christ showed us he showed us how to do that and we don't use it because we think it's what ridiculous we think it's above us you know what is above us the actual fucking bible i'm sorry to swear but we are not above we are not above um saying these things we're not we're not they actually it helps us with what you're gonna sin you're gonna lose your faith and then turn back around that's ridiculous it's ridiculous i need you now god so please no no it is written bro you should not fail in prayer do not without fail carry on every day and put on the armor of god every single morning before i read psalm 118 i'm going to name all of the armor of god for you and then i'll read psalm 118 i'll pray it over you and myself and like it's probably my favorite psalm that's why i'm going to read it but i'm going to pray it over you and myself and there it is. Um, before that, I'm going to read to you the armor of God. So on my wall, I, as I said, I have it written on my wall. I, I, I literally wrote it down, drew some stuff to represent the pieces of armor, and I duct tape it to the wall, literally. And now I can't forget. I see it every time I leave the house, and I have to read it. And I want to. When it's there, you want to put it on. You're realizing God has given us another gift. The breastplate of righteousness to cover our hearts, to keep Jesus in our hearts. How quickly can the world take God out of your heart? Like that. In one second, the world will take God out of your heart. Because God's not going to defend his heart, your heart with his hands. He won't. He'll give you a new one. It's up to you to defend it. He'll take your heart of stone and give you a flesh. It's up to you to put the breastplate of righteousness on. For that reason, to protect 
your heart, to keep God in your heart. The belt of truth, to tighten your clothes. Without truth, we don't have discernment. That is the enemy's tactic, lies. And with lies, we're left naked, vulnerable. The belt is to keep your clothes on, to keep fastened, and to show them that you know the truth. You know, you can see everyone's belt in an outfit. They don't, they don't choose these pieces of armor for no reason. They don't. It's literally because it represents what it does on the body. And the belt shows and fastens. And that is what truth does. Truth shows and it fastens you. And it gives you discernment. Keep the belt of truth on. The helmet of salvation. The blood of Jesus Christ. Christ died on the cross that we may have protection. We can't... The helmet is... The helmet is the most important part, you could say, of the armor. You know, otherwise, just attack the head, attack the head. He can't. He can't kill us. Satan can't kill us. And I think that's what the helmet of salvation represents for me. You know, he cannot kill us. And the blood of Jesus is on our head. And it, I like to think of it as the helmet of salvation. It is finished, Christ said. And that is what gave us the helmet of salvation. To place on the helmet daily is to cover your head, to cover your habits, to be prepared for attack, and to remember you are being sanctified day by day by the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. You know, day by day you will get better with the helmet of salvation. You can protect yourself knowing that you won't take a one shot to the head, you know? Kind of like that. I hope you guys understand what I mean by that. It's really hard to explain the helmet. The shoes of peace. I like this one. The shoes of peace. Wherever we walk, may peace go. Wherever we stand, may comfort be. That's what I have written underneath that, you know? Bro, wherever you walk, may peace go. As soon as we leave the house, how quickly do you lose peace? As soon as you go to the train station, you know, and there's all people bumping into you, how quickly do you get angry? Because I do, but not with the shoes of peace. That's the whole point. It represents where you walk, where you go. No matter where you go, your feet aren't touching this earth. It's about this world. We, we are not of the world. The armor of God is of God. The shoes of peace, peace may go where we walk. Put them on. The shield of faith, one of my favorites. To block the flaming arrows of the enemy. With the shield of faith, it, it stops all of the other armor having to even be used. Yes, this is true. It's true. With simple faith, God will give you the spirit. Remember what God said when the Roman centurion came and asked for him to heal his kid? In nowhere in Judea have I found anyone. No, I think nowhere, nowhere in Israel have I found anyone with such faith. God finds faith some of the most beautiful things. I think it's one of the most beautiful things that he's being believed in the creator being believed in i can understand why that is one of his most favorite things and one something that he favors from us you know he was a lot of us don't believe in him even christians who sit here pretending you know maybe they like the lifestyle of peace they don't realize that it's actually god giving it to them they don't truly have faith they don't you know they don't a lot of people don't have faith. And it's sad to say that about my own Christian brethren. But some of them actually don't have faith, you know. Because when I start talking like this, they would look at me weird. Like, bro, yes, God is here and looking at us. He is. He is. And we all struggle with faith. We do. I'm not judging anyone. We all struggle with faith at times. We're only human. We've never seen God with our eyes, you know. But we have. Look at it. Look around, you know. Use that shield of faith protect yourself from the schemes of the enemy you know and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God as I said the word of God mostly Jesus Christ read the gospels you know and use the word of God read the Psalms and use the word of God the Psalms is the word of God as well it's the sword of the spirit you can cut Satan in half you don't need to tell him to run you don't need to tell him get away from me Satan as I said, after I read those and explain the armor of God, I'm going to read Psalm 118 over you and me. And this is the sword of the Spirit. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. 
his love endures forever why would my computer turn off while I'm recording um the screen just turned off but it's okay Psalm 118 give thanks to the Lord for he is good his mercy endures forever let Israel now say his mercy endures forever let the house of Aaron now say his mercy endures forever let those who fear the Lord say his mercy endures forever in my anguish I cried to the Lord so he answered by setting me free the Lord is with me and I will not be afraid what can man do unto me the Lord is with me and he is my helper I will look in triumph on my enemies it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put trust in man it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put trust into princes all the nations surrounded me but in the name of the Lord I cut them off they encompassed me on every side but in the name of the Lord I cut them off they swarmed around me like bees but they died out as quickly as burning thorns and in the name of the Lord I cut them off I was pushed back and about to fall but the Lord helped me the Lord is my strength and my song and he has become my salvation shouts of joy and victory resound in the tabernacles of the righteous the Lord's right hand has done mighty things the Lord's right hand is lifted high and the Lord's right hand has done mighty things I will not die but live and I will proclaim what the Lord has done the Lord has chastened me severely but he has not given me over unto death open for me the gates of righteousness I will enter and give thanks unto the Lord this is the gate of the Lord through which the, the righteous may enter I will give you thanks for you answered me and you have become my salvation the stone the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone the Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes this is the day that the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it O Lord save us O Lord grant our success blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord from the house of the Lord we bless you the Lord is God and he has made his light shine upon us with bows in hand join in festal procession up to the horns of the altar you are my God and I will give thanks you are my God and I will exalt you give thanks to the Lord for he is good his love and his mercy endureth forever that is the sword of the spirit my brothers and sisters you see the difference a whole lot of yapping from me but then as soon as I'm reading it's like yo see I'm not going to say what I'm saying is yapping. I'd say it's spirit-led, but do you see the difference? The sword of the spirit is here to cut Satan in half. It is. And if you have the armor of God on with the sword of the spirit, you will feel that loss throughout the rest of your day. You get me? Good luck to everyone. I hope you took in that Psalm 118. I'll repeat what it was and um yeah it is written it is written that's how you use the sword of the spirit and you can just read in the bible you don't have to say it to satan you don't have to say it out loud you can just read it you know pick up your verses your saved verses but i'm glad i explained everything else to you good luck to all of you and i pray peace and blessings over all of you and your beloved <sighs> may we enter through the gate of righteousness Amen.